misconceptions of a no number sense fifth grader because most of my career was spent teaching fifth and sixth grade mathematics. So we're going to see if I get any better at timing these things because boy 15 seconds either goes really fast or really slowly. <laughs> ah, there we go. So for any, do I have any elementary teachers in here? Yay. Please giggle and nod your head because you've seen this. So you know starting in third grade kids start to subtract whole numbers and there's lots of zeros in the number on top which is either called the minuend or the subtrahend or the difference or one of those things and what do they do they learn this rule just like Mark said to cross out all, all the zeros and make them nines and subtract and my question to them always was what happened to that extra penny and you will see this starting in third grade all the way through fifth grade and then we have multiplication where it's so routine and so rote that I have to do 0 times 3 is 0, 0 times 9 is 0, 0 times 3 is 0, and then I do the next one and then I add them all up and get that same number. And it gets even more interesting when I'm multiplying a three-digit number times a three-digit number. I think one of the things that causes a lot of misconceptions is language. How many of us learn this is 9 gazinta 27? Three times? So one of my students brought me this. It's from the Stiglitz for those of you who remember it. Gazinta has no meaning. Reducing fractions. What does the word reduce? When Macy is marking things down and reducing their prices, I'm there. So does reducing a fraction mean that it's just getting smaller? Or can I, can I divide the numerator and denominator by a common factor and come up with three-fifths, but are kids still thinking that three-fifths is smaller than the number I started with? Uh, because that's what happens when you reduce something. Just like when Lucy had to reduce and lose all that weight to get into Ricky's show. That's one of my favorite I Love Lucy's. Glenda, I didn't know you were going to be here. I stole your cartoon. I taught Stripe how to whistle. I don't hear him whistling. I said I taught him. I didn't say he learned it. I think we have a lot of teachers who teach really hard. Um, and so it's not that they don't want their kids to learn it, but the way we teach does not ensure that our kids are learning. This is a true confession. I taught fifth grade one year and I got promoted with my students to sixth grade. Put that on the board, said what's one half plus two thirds and that's exactly what they said, at which point I looked at them and said, who was your math teacher last year? <laughs> <laughs> and they all said you were. And I realized at that moment in time, I had taught them very well. We had fraction pieces, but we never attached any number sense to that. It really changed me as a teacher and how I taught fractions. Um, how many of your students would answer that as three and three-fourths, no matter what you do? Because we always start with the fractions, and then we go to the whole numbers. How about doing five minus two is three, and now I'm going to take off another three-fourths? And making some sense out of that for kids. Um, one of my cartoons, my students used to get extra credit for bringing cartoons. Yes, ma'am, I understand you want more than just the math answer. You want me to explain how I got the answer? Copied it from the kid behind me. <laughs> That's not what we mean by communication. Uh, oh, my symbol changed there. Two, if we're going to change to a common denominator with addition and subtraction, then we get to multiplication. All of a sudden, it's you multiply the numerators. That's the new multiplication sign. You <laughs> multiply the denominators. You know, I'm thinking about this. What's so wrong with even having kids follow the same kind of thinking about sometimes I change to a common denominator, sometimes I don't. We got to get rid of the word canceling. Boy, a lot of my symbols have changed here and moved around. Why not call it factoring because that's what we're doing. We're finding a common factor and dividing by that common factor to simplify fractions. Um, kids just start crossing off numbers and changing them and they have no conception of what's going on. And my all-time favorite, division of fractions, ours is not to reason why, just invert and multiply. The problem is I don't know which number to invert. So sometimes I invert the first one, sometimes I invert the second one, depends on which way it works better. Why not change to a common denominator and think about how many groups of two-fifths can I get out of four-fifths? And connect it to what they should have learned with whole numbers. So, uh, and then of course we have decimals. Now I have to put down the mic thing for this one. What is going on with this? Oh, this is terrible. My symbols have all changed since the last time we did this, Jim. So when we multiply fractions, have you taught kids just count the decimal places? And when you divide, the kids all do this. Why? Why not think about the meaning and attach it to whole numbers? And then we have using formulas where we teach these kids all these formulas and hopefully this isn't going to happen all in grades 3, 4, and 5 from now on. But these kids have so many letters and, and numerals and symbols and they can't attach anything to any of them and there's no meaning going on. I love this cartoon. Okay, let me see if I've got these area formula, formulas memorized. For a triangle, it's one half the base times the height. For a trapezoid, it's one half um, 
the quantity A plus B times H. I'm going to pass this test. And then she turns around and she says to him, but I always forget, is it my height or the triangle's height? <laughs> How many times do we do that to kids? How many times do we teach them formulas and they have no idea of what it means? They're just plugging in numbers. And so my last slide is everything you do in math should make sense to you except trapezoids. <laughs>